In our last video, we learned some introductory probability rules, and in this, in this video, we're going to learn how to actually use those rules to calculate some probabilities. So, we have an example here, and the example says, suppose that 40% of cars in your area, and this is a big area, all right, this is not a small town, this is a big city, 40% of, of cars in your area are manufactured in the United States, 30% are manufactured in Japan, 10% in Germany, 20% in other countries. If cars are selected at random, find the probability that, and let's say I'm looking for a car and I want to find the probability that the car is made in either Japan or Germany. Okay? Well, I know the probability of the car being made in Japan is uh, 0.3. Okay? And I know the probability that the car is being made in Germany is 0.1, because that's 10%. And I also know that a car cannot be made in both Japan and Germany. It's got to be one or the other one. And what that means is these two events are disjoint. And if they're disjoint, that means I can use the addition rule to find the probability of one or the other one. And so that means that the probability of Japan or Germany would be 0.3 plus 0.1, also known as... 0.4. Okay? So there's a 40% chance that the car came from either Japan or Germany. Alright? Well, let's see, uh, let's look at our next, uh, yeah, let's look at our next example. Let's uh, find the probability that a car is not U.S. made. Okay? Well, I know that the probability that the car is, I'll use A for America, probability that the car is not, uh, it is made in America is uh, 40%, right? So that tells me that the probability that the car is not made in America, that's just the complement of our initial event, and the probability of the complement is just going to be 1 minus that. So it's going to be 0. 0.6. Now, I could have gotten this by adding up 30% plus 10% plus 20% to get 0.6. I find it's a little easier to just say, well, 1 minus the probability of its complement. Okay? Um, you see two in a row from Japan. Okay, so this time I'm walking along a huge car lot, and I look at a couple of cars, and what I see is they're both Japanese. Now, let's think for a second. Is the fact that the first car is from Japan, does that affect where the car is that's next to it? I would say no. If the, if the make of the earth, the, the origin of the first car does not affect the origin of the second car, that means they're independent events. And if they're independent events, that means in order to find the probability that the first car is Japanese and the second car is Japanese, would be probability of first car being Japanese times probability of the second car being Japanese, our multiplication rule, okay? So I'll say uh, the probability of, and I'll call this J1, that'll be the probability of the first car being Japanese, that is uh, 0.3, and the probability that the second car is Japanese is also 0.3, and since these are independent events, then the probability of the first car being Japanese and probability of the second car being Japanese is 0 0.09. 0 0.3 times 0.3 is 0 0.09. So let's just think about this for a second. What this tells us is, if I'm walking along this huge parking lot, and for whatever reason I just start looking at pairs of cars, 90% of the time, the pair of, car that I look, pair of cars that I look at, both cars will be from Japan. Okay. The other one, the other 91% of the time, it'll be some other combination. But 9% of the time, both of those cars will be from Japan. Okay? Uh, let's look at another one. None of three cars came from Germany. So this time, let me straighten this up a little bit. Uh, this time, I'm looking at uh, triples of cars, okay? So sets of three cars, okay? And again, this is just how I choose to spend my time walking around a massive uh, parking, uh, uh, parking lot, 
and uh, looking at little groups of three cars. And what I want to know is, what's the likelihood that out of those groups of three cars, none of them, none of the three cars will be from Germany? Well, let's see. Uh, that means first car not from Germany, and second car not from Germany, and third car not from Germany. So that means I'm looking for, I'm, I'm going to use my multiplication rule again, okay? Because like I said, one car being from, one, from uh, uh, Germany or Japan or something does not affect the other car's origin, so these are independent events, okay? So first off, I know that the probability of a car being from Germany is 0.1. Well, that means the probability of a car not being from Germany, the complement of that would be 0.9, 1 minus 0.1. Well, the probability of, uh, I'll say the complement of car 1 times the probability of car 2 not being from Germany times the probability of car 3 not being from Germany that's going to be 0.9 times 0.9 times 0.9. That's just 0.9 cubed, which I believe is 0.729. Okay? So I'm walking around. I'm checking out little groups of three cars, randomly choosing groups of three cars in this massive parking lot. And 72.9% of the time, none of those cars will be German, okay? The other, uh, what's that, 27.1% of the time, one of those cars will be from Germany. Well, I say one. One or two or three. Which brings up this, whoa! Which brings up this next problem, okay? Uh, there we go. Uh, What's the probability that at least one of three cars is U.S. made? Okay? Now, what does at least one mean? Well, it means one of the cars, one out of, again, I'm looking at groups of three cars. So, one of the cars could be U.S. made, or two of the cars could be U.S. made, or possibly all three could be U.S. made. The only thing that doesn't fit this description is zero cars are U.S. made. So, what that means is the complement of this event is no cars being U.S. made. I know how to calculate that because I just did it for, uh, for German cars. Okay? So, the probability of a car being made in America is um, 0.4. The probability of a car not being made in America would be 0.6. It's 1 minus 0.4. The probability of three cars not being made in America, car one, car two, and car three, that none of them are made in America, is 0.6 cubed because we're using the multiplication rule. Each car is independent of the other car. So it's going to be 0.6 times 0.6 times 0 0.6, 0 0.6 cubed, which I believe that is... Uh, uh, point, uh, 0.216. All right. And so, uh, so that means the probability of this not happening, at least one of the cars being made in the U.S., so the probability of at least one is 1 minus this, or 0.784. So there we go. All right? As I move around my car lot and I'm looking at little groups of three cars, what's the probability that in this group of three cars that I randomly select, at least one of those cars will be from the U.S.? 78.4%. Okay? Last one I want to look at is what is the probability of the first Japanese car being the fourth one I choose. So let's get an, get a good handle of exactly what's being asked here. 
I'm walking along and I'm just I just start looking at cars and I say, there's one, there's another one, there's another one, there's another one, there's another one. And so I'm looking at them in order. Now, what's the probability of the first Japanese car that I see being the fourth one that I choose? Well, what that means is the first car, the first one is uh, not Japanese. The second one is not Japanese. The third one, third, is not Japanese. And the fourth one is Japanese. Okay? Well, the probability of the first car not being Japanese, that's the complement of J, uh, is uh, 1 minus uh, J. And the, the probability of J was going to be 0.3, so that's going to be 0.7. Uh, so what that means, and the probability of J, I said, is going to be 0.3. And so what that means is we're going to use, use our multiplication rule because these are four separate events. So it's going to be 0.7 times 0.7 times 0.7 times 0.3. So the probability is... 0.7 cubed times 0.3, which is 0 0.1029, approximately 10%. So there's about a 10% chance that as I come over here and just start selecting cars at random, there's a 10% chance that the first Japanese car that I see is the fourth one that I choose. That's not something that I would have just been able to rattle off just by looking at this, this situation. Okay, so these are examples. These, these are examples of how we manipulate and how we use these elementary probability rules that we've learned here. Okay, in the next video, we're going to look at look at some more advanced probability rules.